if we ask who the first person was to think of the form of the universe as we now see it, filled with billions and billions, I should warn my Carl Sagan shirt, of galaxies. The answer is Immanuel Kant, a man who never left East Prussia and who had never even seen a mountain. that path. 
the sequel to to each other um, over equal amounts of time, something like that. If you split any clip, uh, any lips into a pie, pie slices, with the point of the pies being at one of the foci of the ellipse, it uh, there's you know it creates equal areas of of slices. Um, given the, I believe, given the same units of time that have elapsed um, to get its position. It, that probably didn't make sense, sorry guys, but I think uh, the relationship between math and physics and our ability to, to have used those tools, um, to use the tools of math, these abstract concepts, to understand our world that um, that have its intimations in art and philosophy to me is so profound and it speaks volumes about our abilities to reason and uh, to be passionate about something that leads to inquiries scientific inquiries and Kant was a German philosopher so So let's get to the meat of this article, Kant's relationship to the 
scientific understanding of galaxies. Okay, so let's type in
while the empirical approach is the branch of philosophy, which states that knowledge comes purely from sensory experience, what you see, for example. And uh, this metaphysical and empirical approach uh, very much inform modern philosophy and uh, worldviews, scientific worldviews. And so he was, uh, you know, I think it's interesting to think about great thinkers, truly great thinkers, are those people who are able to tap into the zeitgeist or the current mood, the culture, the worldview of the times, and of other great thinkers of their, their contemporary, you know, peers, their era, and form a synthesis of, by looking, I love, I'm a big fan of uh, synthetic history, which is trying to understand history from the perspective, well, from as many perspectives as possible. Just like you, uh, you have a noble, a bourgeois history, and you have a peasant history, and much of history, and uh, those worldviews weren't always compatible. They weren't always the same. And I think it's fascinating to uh, to be able to have your ear down to the track and, and listen to the what's possibly coming and predict or at least have a good inclination of what the future might lead to uh, by paying very, very, very much attention to the current worldview. And Kant was a, was a genius at that. He was, uh, he anticipated, as we're about to find out, many worldviews uh, that, or many perspectives that led to science, um, modern scientific perspective, uh, specifically in astronomy. So, through his uh, Copernican revolution, and Kant self-described himself as uh, leading to a Copernican revolution in the same way Copernicus helped, was a crucial figure in transitioning our worldview, our accepted worldview from a geocentric Earth at the center to a heliocentric the Sun at the center of our solar system. Kant thought he did something similar for philosophy when he moved the criterion of truth from his from assertions about external and external reality to the immediate knowledge of yourself what you can sense. What you can sense. What you can hear. What you can feel. And um, something to think about is hearing is a form of feeling. When oscillating oscillate up and down in a, in a, uh, what's the, concentric circles, in a, you know, a uh, spherical propagation through space and time, it finally hits the little bones, I think, I think they're called cochlea, in your ears, and vibrates them, the energy is transferred from the air molecules. Looks kind of like that, I guess. Propagates to your bones. And the vibration registered from those bones gets transmitted through your neurological structure and you interpret that as what we, um, on the very, very, very high level of abstraction, call sound. And, uh, but really it's a intimate immersion in your environment, just like
energy kind of sucked out of them. As soon as you dip, you dip your finger in cold water and you feel that neurologically very quickly. So, um, anyways, I, I just, I'm fascinated. I'm like such a geek about that. When you, like Richard Feynman's approach, I always say it, is that when you look at a flower, does it make it more or less interesting? When you understand how its biochemistry works and you understand that it's bright pink because it absorbs all the other wavelengths of light and re uh, reflects and rejects that one particular wavelength or maybe it's a multiple a couple wavelengths that fuse in our eye to become pink and uh, so is it blue and yellow make green so perhaps blue and yellow, although this not might be right, perhaps blue and yellow are uh, reflected into our eyes, make green. But, um, so Kant, Kant, a significant key player in the theory of, uh, of, of uh, creating a paradigm shift in how we view the world and our place in it. So Kant contradicted and uh, um, transitioned the prevailing worldview from a uh, assertions about metaphysical external also reality to the intimacy, the immediacy of your personal senses. His contribution practically put an end to philosophical speculation as it had been practiced for centuries. So it uh, established a firm basis for factual knowledge, in particular the scientific method. So he was actually a, you know, an integral figure for uh, developing a rigorous definition of the scientific method. But it also opened the way to agnosticism on ultimate issues. For better or for worse, his legacy has never been entirely transcended. So why are we talking about Kant? Why, why is this uh, philosopher being recognized on, on this website? Uh, because the two theories that some of you may or may not know um, about now known as Kant's theory. So as, uh, despite being a well-known philosopher, Kant's early works focused actually more on geology, astronomy, and physics. In his 1755 work, The Universal Natural History and Theory of the Heavens, Kant talks about astronomy and two noteworthy theories about the heavens. This is his nebular hypothesis on, um, sorry, the first is his nebular hypothesis on star and planetary formations, where he theorized that thin, dim clouds of dust and gas out in the cosmos would collapse in on themselves under the force of gravity, causing them to spin and to form a disk. From this spinning disk, stars and planets would form. This is so fascinating that uh, he took Newton's theory of gravity and derived, extrapolated this from it. And from this type of formation, the rotation of Earth and the other planets would be explained. So brilliant. Unlike the earlier great German philosophers such as uh, Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz, Newton's uh, sort of unknown opponent, the guy who also uh, independently invented a form of the calculus, Kant was not a mathematician in any way. So his nebular 
hypothesis was not given a mathematical equation. And, um, Traveling kind of 
speeding away from from each other. So um, yeah, it's just fascinating to alter and uh, toy around with the idea that our galaxy is a universe in itself. Um, and for all intents and purposes, it really is our our only universe is our galaxy because until we absolutely master interstellar travel at speeds at or maybe greater than the speed of light at some point in the future, we certainly have no chance whatsoever at at accessing and reaching physically any other galaxy other than you know, other than our even little parts of our own. So, Kant, uh, wait, hold on, let me see, is this William Herschel or Kant? Kant's idea was that the dim, okay, so Kant did say that, quote, it is far more natural. Let me read this out of the book here. It is far more natural and conceivable to regard them as being not such enormous single stars, but systems of many whose distance presents them in such a narrow space that the light, which is individually imperceptible from each of them, reaches us on account of their immense multitude in a uniform, pale glimmer. Their analogy with the stellar system, which we find ourselves, the, their analogy with the stellar system in which we find ourselves, our solar system, their shape, which is just what it ought to be, according to our theory, the feebleness of their light, which demands a presupposed infinite distance. All this is in perfect harmony with the view that these elliptical figures are just universes, so to speak, Milky Ways, like those whose constitution we have just unfolded. Again, Kant didn't have a scientific background. Thus, most of his theories were built on guesswork and speculation. But, guess or not, it uh, sparked a huge debate. This debate started in the late 1700s. And, um, Laplace viewed the spiral nebula as the nebular hypothesis in action. And many astronomers were subscribed to Laplacian beliefs. Uh, Laplacians believed that the spiral nebula were stellar nurseries, while others held Kant's view of a multi-galaxy universe. So it was the question of whether the nebulae were inside or, or, or outside our galaxy vastly vastly far away and uh, of course this wasn't put to rest until the uh, great Edwin Apple came onto the scene in 1920 so 150, 60, 70 years later uh, it took to actually confirm using the brand new Mount Wilson 100 inch telescope in the San Gabriel mountain range. So the Cepheid variables that he was able to identify, um, he deduced scientifically, empirically, that they were staggering, a staggering, I guess I say that right, an absolutely staggering 2.38 million, 2.38 million light years away. So not only is it our closest celestial neighbor. But its full extent covers
there's a three second arc in the sky, making it about six times the size of the moon and the sun. So, uh, I suppose when you're looking at it from a non-visible other wavelengths other than visible light, its arc actually stretches. So if you look at the moon, it's six times wider than that of the moon. Damn, that's... wow, that's, that's amazing. Jesus. Sorry, that's so... F f just awe-inspiring. It's amazing, so amazing. Okay, so, uh, despite its now known size, the rest of the galaxy remains elusive to stargazers, as only the brightly lit core is visible to the naked eye, with a few prominent stars. These stars were much, much further away than any stars in the Milky Way, so Kant was right yet again. With all things considered, how much credit can we actually give them? As it turns out, a lot. Most great ideas in any science field begin as guesses. A little more than speculation. with very little or contrary evidence behind them. As with the uh, case with Nicholas Copernicus, um, you know, of course, it would seem our senses would have told us that the sun is the thing that indeed is orbiting the earth. That's why it took us so long to lift the veil up from that phenomenon. So, um, more importantly, if we ask who the first person was to think of the form of the universe as we now see it, filled with billions and billions, I should warn my Carl Sagan shirt, of galaxies, the answer is Immanuel Kant, a man who never left East Prussia and who had never even seen a mountain. I was going to close the book there, but my hand wasn't positioned right, so there we go. Really, that the 
channel's doing so well. Um, and it's very stereotypical, but it really wouldn't be possible. It, I wouldn't be motivated to keep spending time in between people mowing their lawns outside um, to explore these topics in a hopefully relaxing manner. If you guys didn't show your support in whatever way you choose, though, uh, it just means a lot. It really does. It means a lot. So, um, I don't know what else to say other than thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you all. Um, and the last thing I gotta say is, uh, I don't know when I'm gonna put this video up. It might, might be tonight. But, I just recently got on the Tingles app. So if you guys like Tingles and uh, the app and the real thing, I'm uh, I'm now featured on there. So I think it's a really cool idea for for those of you who didn't know. Um, I, I posted a trick that you can go to the Chrome, the Google Chrome browser, and reach. YouTube from there, and if you watch the video from there and then X out, you can generally swipe down from your phone and uh, you'll be able to play YouTube videos in the background, um, because of course YouTube is being stingy and makes you sign up for their red service, like that's a brilliant idea, um, in order to play things in the background, so there is that way, but now that we have the Tinkles app, if you're looking to listen to ASMR, ASMR content in the background. You can go on there and play that strictly as audio and uh, listen to it with your phone off. So I thought that was a really cool improvement. And um, and of course the actual search features. It is pretty feature rich. So go check it out. I, uh, I put a link in my video. So I think if you hit the link from, you know, my link it will give me, you know, whatever, I don't know what the rate is, but it will support me financially, I guess, if you hit it through my link. So, if you're going to check it out anyway, um, if you want to support me, go ahead. If not, no worries. But, uh, yeah, I'm kind of excited. I'm slowly branching out, so um, we're growing and we're growing together. And uh, thank you, everybody, who comes and hangs out in the live chats. And, uh, and, of course, everybody else who interacts with the, uh, with the channel in any way, shape, or form. So, as always, sleep well.